today we're going to be taking a look at can of a cheese ball deck that I literally just designed because I found out that I had four copies of this card. Um, it's basically just a run of a mill life gain cleric tribal deck. I called it clerical. It's a pun on caracal. Never mind. Anyway, so let's just run through this real quick and then go do a quick playthrough. So first of all, we got Soul Mender. Pretty simple. It's a one-drop cleric. You can tap it to gain a life. Pretty helpful. I had two copies of Containment Priest just because you never know with graveyard decks these days. Um, and I had it, uh, but you can basically prevent a uh, non-token creature from entering the battlefield if it wasn't cast. Uh, four copies of Hollowed Priest. Again, this one's a no-brainer. It's a cleric. Uh, when you gain life, which happens a lot with this deck, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Um, it's a great way to draw attention for removal. Uh, removal. Uh, Impassionated Orator. Not only is it a cleric, but it allows you to gain life just for having creatures enter the battlefield. Uh, revitalize. You draw a card. You gain three life. Seems pretty straightforward. Uh, feed the Swarm. Um, one interesting thing I've been doing with this particular deck is experimenting with all kinds of different types of removal. So this one, <coughs> excuse me, the downside is that it is a sorcery. However, you can destroy a creature or enchantment. The downside being that you lose life equals to the permanence converted mana cost, which isn't a huge deal because this deck gains life. Uh, two copies of Heartless Act, you can remove counters uh, or you can just destroy something that doesn't have counters on it. It's also at instant speed, so an instant speed kill something uh, for two mana is just straight up good no matter what you're doing. Uh, cleric of Life Spawn again. This is the one I based the deck off of. It says whenever a cleric enters the ba uh, enters the battle on the field under your control, you gain a life. And whenever you gain a life for the first time each turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on Cleric of Life's Blood. Uh, again with the removal, I've got three copies of Banishing or sorry, two copies of Banishing Light. It was three. Um, when it enters, you can exile target non land permanent until Banishing Light in, uh, leaves the battlefield, so that it's any permanent. Uh, <clears throat> three copies of Marauding Blight Priest, which is an interesting name. Um, whenever you gain life, each opponent loses a life. Uh, Soul Shatter. This is, again, another interesting uh, removal choice. I just found out I had four of these. Uh, but basically, whenever an opponent... or It forces each opponent to sacrifice a creature or a Planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost amongst creatures and Planeswalkers they control. Uh, which is really good when it comes to getting around things that say, oh, if you target this, you lose life. Vito, Throne of the Dusk Rose, he's a cleric. Uh, he makes all of our life gain become life loss for our opponent. Yeah, of course we're going to use this card. I mean, why wouldn't you? And then finally, we got two... Possibly in the future three copies of Drana the Last Blood Chief. This is the top of our curve, so it doesn't or it's not gonna see play very often. But it has flying, it's a 4-4, that's already pretty good. It is a cleric, so you get the triggers. But whenever it attacks, defending player chooses a non-legendary creature card in your graveyard, which most of the creature cards in our graveyard will be non-legendary. Um, and then you return it to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it, making it a vampire in addition to other types. So, since this one doesn't really matter for our synergy that much, um, I didn't really want to overinvest in it. But it can deny the fact that attacking and getting a creature is just straight up value. Um, the plus one plus one counter doesn't matter that much, although it is a bonus. Uh, vampire doesn't matter at all. Anyway, let's get through our standard 3 to 4 games with this, and then I'm probably going to go to bed. Alright, let's see who our first match is against. It is... XTB. Okay. <laughs> Alright, Temple Sun, Scored Barons. Oh, yeah, I didn't go over the mana base. Basically, it's some tapped lands, some of the flip lands, and then just basics. Um. Ah. We'll keep it. We can just turn one Temple of Silence, turn two Impassionated Orator, and then just go from there. I don't think I care too much about having another swamp at the moment. We'll just put that down. 
of planes. All right, passionate orator. Next turn, we can play two cups to Soul Mender and then see where the game takes us from there. Oh no, Lotus Cobra. I should not worry about Lotus Cobra. Um, hmm, actually, if we play Revitalize. Nah, it's better off to have Soul Mender. Because after the Marauding Bite Priest comes in, we can. Literally just tap it to gain life and have our opponent lose life. No attacks. I don't really want to lose the Appassionated Orator just yet. Landfall. It is the bad maze of it. Yeah, this is another one that should be in the deck, but I just did not have the rares necessary to bring him out. But rest assured, it will eventually become the next one drop. Whenever I do an upgrade video for this. Um, no tax. I think at the moment the plan I can go with is playing another Marauding Blood Priest. Uh, and then just chip damage. Just... Yeah, chip away at it. At least that's my next play. I don't know what the rest of my game is going to look like. Uh, is this going to be some counter shenanigans? I'm feeling like this is going to be some counter shenanigans. It does not really make sense why you would play Speaker of a Heaven. I don't know. This just seems like a bunch of jank to me. All right. Um, well, we did get another bright climb pathway. Uh, vanishing light, we can shut down that conclave mentor. We'll worry about that later. We're gonna go ahead and play the marauding blood boost to go the original idea. Uh, activate the soul mender. Activate the soul mender. And you know what? I'm not even gonna play this land because I don't know if I want it to be black or white. Actually, yeah, I do. I don't want it to be black. Um, uh, no attacks. Because we're still just doing four damage a turn because we can. Next turn, I can easily do six, possibly more. Ooh. Okay. Put that down right quick, didn't you? Alright. Well, uh, I'm not gonna argue with that. Nope, no blocks. Go for it, dude. Alright, we will go ahead and play a Hollow Priest. Do some of that life gaining business. Tap a Soul Mender, do some more of that life gaining business. Revitalize, do some more of that life gaining business. And all the benefits that come from it. And still not attack. Next, okay. As I would say, next turn we probably will attack, but he's pretty much done for next turn. So that was an interesting way of going about that. I've never just straight up used Soul Mender in a combo that allows you to just take over with like no effort. Let's do that again, shall we? Or try to anyway. Tingly nips. I'm telling you, some of the names people come up with are just uh, endless humor. Okay. We'll keep this, but I'm not super happy about the hand. At least we have Temple of Silence, so we can possibly, you know, take a look at the top deck and find something better than what we have in here. Uh, I don't really want removal at the moment. I either want land or more creatures. Okay, Containment Priest. That is technically more creatures. Not the kind of more creatures I was up before, but it is more creatures.
Conclave Mentor. Probably not a bad idea to nip that in the bud. But at the same time, there is the whole Cleric of Life spawned. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to play this smart. Alright. And we will just go ahead and attack. There's not a whole lot of reason to just sit there and gain life off of it. Uh, this could allow him to ramp, and I don't want that to happen either. We'll banish it. Attack. Just endlessly shutting down that early game. That's the kind of stuff I like to see. Or do, I should say. So, Cleric of Life Spawn and Soul Mender. I can basically just set up a system where I'm constantly pumping it. It will most likely end up being removed, especially if this turns out to be an Abzan instead of a uh, green white deck. But we'll see what happens. Oh, look, another Fertilid. Okay, Temple of Silence. Let's see if we can't get something good on the top. That's decent. Alright, Cleric's Life Bond comes out. Activate ability. Cool, enter. <sighs> And then next turn we play Cleric and either Containment Priest or Revitalize. We'll see. It does have kind of limited growth, doesn't it? But still, it can end up working out in our favor. I don't have any idea what this guy's game plan is. It's got to be just like counters. That can't really be anything else. Yeah, it just seems like he's just doing counters and Celestia colors. All right, Cleric Life Blood, Life's Bond. Yeah, I think that probably saved it. Yeah, it did. Just barely, though. Interesting way to go about that, too. Uh, we will go ahead and attack with this other cleric. They might double block, or they might just take four to the face. You never know in these trying times. That's a good card. I need to get a couple copies of it. Well, that was just rude and uncalled for. Alright, cool. Scored Baron. So we'll go ahead and start with Containment Priest. Play Scored Barons. And we'll save this Containment Priest for next turn. Actually, we can save for the middle of my opponent's turn. Because it has flash. Should be interesting to see what they try to do. I have one card in hand. What choices will you make, sir? Wonder or hurdy going on. Doesn't really do anything other than gives us some additional pump. Another 
conclave mentor. That's not helpful. Anyway, so I start attacking. Looks like he's probably going to squeak out another turn out of this, but I don't think it's going to make enough of a difference. Ah, oh, yeah, he's done for. Alright, well, two solid wins, although, admittedly, I don't think either one of those decks performed very well. Let's try again. One more round, maybe two, we'll see what happens. If, it's, if this one ends up going long, I'll probably cut it off, but if it's a quick one, then probably not. Canton and deck does have some power to it. Okay, none of this comes in tapped. It's not beautiful, but it's something. I have removal and I have clerics. And a little life gain combo. Not a particularly great one, but it exists. So. I have the option to have options. And that's always a good option. So we will go ahead and put the orator down. Next turn we'll put down the hollowed priest. And then we'll have a priest with... Daxos. Okay, so I know it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Oh, yes, definitely. Please be on top. Uh, but I think I'm going to specifically use Free the Swarm's Destroy Enchantment ability. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. All I know is Daxus definitely wasn't staying. Oh, okay. Well, since you want to play Vito, Thorn of the Dust Gross, how about I... Uh... Destroy it. And then... Play a Swamp, and play Impassioned Orator. And attack. I'm really hoping I can get a land next turn, because it's going to make this Vito play a lot better. Okay. Well, I'm playing Vito. Okay, um, I'm not attacking. There is no wisdom in attacking at this time. Oh! First, we are going to play a Hollow Priest. That's going to cause some triggers. Some more triggers. And then uh, we'll put down Squirt Barons. That also causes a few triggers. And then we're going to end the turn. I think if we don't really draw anything good next turn, we'll just activate Vito's... Uh, what is it? Lifelink ability? And see where that gets us. Okay. Um, that's something. That's a bunch of triggers, man. <laughs> Alright, we will attack with uh, Hollow Priest. And see where that gets us. Yeah. That thing's dead. I think we could probably wrap this up next turn, depending on how things go. Or at the very least, put us in a very locked position.
Alright, you got another planes, which is interesting. Tells me Black is on a super dependent part of his deck. Oh, Glorious Anthem puts Helioid Sun Crown on the throne. Or activates it, I should say. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's a land. So... Activate ability. Next. Uh... Hmm. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I think I just screwed that turn up. I should have done that defensively instead of attempting an offense. But, let's see. If I play Veto next turn, I can set off still another series of... Con of uh, life losses would be four damage Wait, how <laughs> yikes oh yeah I really screwed up last turn Alright, well that might help. Let's put down a bright climb. Revitalize! I flare spawned! It's not going to stop the aerial assault, so... Okay, that makes sense. We're definitely going to put the bigger zombie... ...priority of kills. Cleric of Life Spawn isn't going to do as much for us as I would like. <clears throat> It does give us an additional life gain trigger, though. Which is pretty important. We just need to be playing more clerics. I think I might take that risky play veto, destroy a veto combo. Oh, juice. Ah. I wish I had this card. So good in the deck. Although, admittedly, right now it wouldn't do me any good. Keloid might not be a bad option for this build as well. Okay. Swamp, because I guess so. Yeah. Then we will go ahead and sacrifice... Oh, but I can't really attack. I don't think this one's gonna... I think this might be it. I think we might have met our match. Yeah. He's got lethal in the air. We lose. Well, let's just sit back and take it. Yeah, good game. Oh well. Um, we're not even at a half hour. Let's go ahead and see if we can't sneak in one final game. Call the night. Actually, let's open this pack first. See if we can't get anything cool and inspiring. What in the world is this? It's a cleric. I think it's plus five plus one plus one counters. 
Huh. This fits right in with our whole tribal theme. Why don't we just throw it in the deck? Uh, what do we want to remove? How about... Uh, what would I remove? I guess Soul Shatter. It's not super relevant to the build. <clears throat> then again, neither is this demon. Although it might be in the future. We'll see. Speaker of the Heavens would definitely become a priority, though. Okay. Temple of Silence into a Hollow Priest and Cleric combo seems okay. Alright, they played a Swamp, we played a Temple of Silence. That's fine, that can stay right where it's at. Boot nipper! Nipping at the boot. Cleric. Boom. Next turn, Impassionated Orator. Impassioned Orator. Or we could play Marauding Blight Priest. That's kind of a cool little combo right there. So this guy's doing a mono black play with a punch of counters thing. No blocks. We may have to depend on just a little bit of luck here. Uh, not attack. I don't really want to deal with Death Touch at the moment. Oh, that's just. That's not very nice. Look at this art, though. Disgusting. Okay. Temple of Silence. No, I actually want to hit a land drop, so we'll just uh, put that away. Um, Impassionated Orator. Or Impassion. Not Impassionated. No attacks. Alright, we got another Swamp. Ah, Death Touch Tribal. I've seen this before. No blocks. Oh, what do you know? Vanishing light, right when I kinda don't want it. Well, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put down a hollow priest. I will, of course, in due time, have an additional need for it, but... Still not attacking. So I think the banishing light, I'll have to use that to get rid of the hooded blight fang. Or the veto, that seems kind of important too. Mmm, no box. Yeah. Oh cool. Alright, plane, spanishing light, get rid of the hood of light fang. Hollow priest. I love watching triggers stack up like that. It's so fun. Alright, we're gonna attack with both of these things. I'm kind of hoping that they will stop one of them with a the boot nipper but I doubt it.
but that's fine. More boot nippers. That's gonna be enough for me, dog. Maybe I should go Abzan and get that like anti kill my thing. Nah. Alright, first drawn out, last of Blood Chief. I have to pressure them down. Because otherwise, we're just going to straight up lose. We need to make them choose between lose a bunch of life or lose a bunch of creatures. Let's see what they choose. Like the obvious choice is use the boot nipper to stop the big hollow blood priest. Okay, they're using Vito to. Okay, okay. Wow. Did they calculate out a win already? I guess we'll see. Yeah, okay. They might. Yeah, they might have. Okay, they got triggers. That's what it is. Okay. That was a pretty clever play. I did not think that through, but it's whatever. It was fun nonetheless. Anyway, thanks for watching, y'all, and have a great rest of the day.